Welcome to today's episode of The Only Thing That Matters, getting your startup to product market fit here on Chicago Founders TV. Why do we call it The Only Thing That Matters? Because when product market fit was first popularized as a term by Mark Andreessen, he titled his blog post The Only Thing That Matters, explaining that if you don't get your startup to product market fit, it's dead. We bring you clips from our Founder Stories interviews with Hall of Fame level entrepreneurs providing the insights and expertise that allowed them to achieve product market fit, so you can too. Today's episode features Jason Fried, founder of 37 Signals, now known as Basecamp. Jason is a great entrepreneur, a great guy, and a really great writer. You may know his blog, Signal vs. Noise, or have read one of his best-selling books. Y Combinator founder Paul Graham often talks about how the best companies, the biggest and most successful companies, start as projects. And one of the themes we see in our Founder Stories interviews is that the best companies deeply and personally understand the problem they're solving. Basecamp started as an internal project at 37 Signals, and Jason attributes a lot of their success to that fact. Here's Jason telling that story. Basecamp as a product came from um, us. We were originally a web design company, and uh, we were doing work for hire for, for web design. So companies would hire us to redesign their site or make a site for them. And we got really, we started the company in 99, got really busy in 2002, 2003, and we were basically managing projects like a lot of people still do today, which is via email, right? They would be sending an email back and forth, we'd deliver work via email, and it's fine, but at a certain point, especially in long-running projects, it turns into kind of a mess, right? right? People don't know who saw what and what the latest version of this is and the whole thing, right? So yep. um, we looked around at the time at, at project management software, and it was, it was not solving the problems that we had. We didn't have... Uh, problems where we needed to broadcast project schedules or make Gantt charts or numbers. And, and it, was, it was more about we need to talk to our client and deliver stuff and get feedback and know where they stand and know where we stand and have stuff on the record, that kind of stuff. So we couldn't find something, so we built something for ourselves. But we didn't really know that it was going to be a product at the time. It was just we need something to run our own project management. And it turned out that once we built it for ourselves in a few months, we started using it with, with clients that we had. And they really liked it, and they said, what is this thing? And we said, it's this thing we made. I don't know, it's this thing. Um, it didn't have a name, it's just this thing. Uh, and so, you know, we kept hearing that, and then, like, you know, the light bulb goes on, you're like, maybe there's something here. Let's turn it into a product and see what happens. And so it turned out that we put some prices on it, which we just guessed at. Um, I, I, uh, I was sort of getting sick of clients, like client work. It wasn't really, I wasn't enjoying it. Like, you do a big project, you pass it off, it doesn't get implemented the way you thought. Uh, people here, I'm sure, know that, who are in that business. And eventually, it, it gnaws at you. You know, yeah, this is not satisfying for me. Um, and so I started thinking about making products for a while. I'm like, well, we could make these custom, like, we're making, like, maybe we could make a blog for people who are going on a trip, and they could, they could write up their travels and share it with their friends, and I don't know. This is, like, really early. Um, but we didn't do any of that, and we just kept doing client work, because that's what paid the bills. But you were thinking product. Thinking a little bit about product, because I, I remember my FileMaker days when I enjoyed making a product, and you make a product and it's your opinions and you put it out there and then right. people can buy it or they don't, compared to client work where you're basically being told what, ultimately you're being told what to do. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I, I just like, you know, I, I was thinking product again, but we didn't know what to do, and I don't know. I just kept doing work, and we just got busier and busier and busier, and um, we needed some way to manage the projects, and that's how that whole you thing links up. You get busier and busier and busier with work you weren't really that into anymore. Well, I st we started doing a whole new thing. So I'm surprised the industry has not really taken this on as an idea, because I think it's a great idea and it worked really well for us. I, I realized at a certain point that one of the reasons client work sucks is because it's a bad deal. So a client, you, you pitch a client on this big project, they are already nervous. They will have to put up 50, 60, 70, 100 grand, whatever. They're not going to get, they don't know what they're buying. It's going to take six months to do it. Like, that's a shitty deal. Like, that's not something a lot of people are happy about going into. Um, and so, and I wasn't happy about it because they weren't, it was just weird. I don't like those big, long projects. They end up, it's just boring. Anyway, so we, we launched this thing called 37 Express, which was, a, I'm like, I don't want to do big projects somewhere. I want to do small projects. I want to do one page projects. So the deal was, you hire us to do one page on your site, 3500 bucks. we'll deliver it in a week. There's nothing to talk about. So <laughs> it's not about, there's no revisions. So you almost made it a product. I made, a, I made web design a product. Huh. Um, and, and it started getting really popular. 
Um, so what people would say is like, hey, you know, I'd be like, you don't need a whole site redesign. You just like, someone needs to look at your search results page or your shopping cart page or your home page. Like, let's do a page at a time. You'll get it in a week. You know exactly what you're getting, you know how much it's gonna cost, and you know we're gonna get it. And you, know, you really know these things. Uh, and it started lighting up. Like a lot of people started buying these things from us. So we were doing dozens of these things, um, which was when we got it busy because we were just four people at the time. So doing dozens of these things was difficult. And that's when we really re uh, needed to manage these things. Got it. That's how that happened. And then we were still doing some longer term client projects, but we turned web design into a product. The product and, became and popular. How big a, how, you were, but you, you were a pretty good sized web design business for. I think we were probably doing maybe a million bucks a year at yeah. that point. You know, but we've been around for that's five a lot of, years. That's a lot of thirty-five hundred dollars projects. Yeah. Well, they weren't all that. So we had a few big ones, and then quantity-wise, though, we were doing a lot of these smaller ones. Um, and um, we had maybe a three, four big ones a year, a couple hundred grand or something each. I don't know what it was. And then, like, we did a bunch of these small ones. Got it. Small ones were fun because we got to solve a very specific problem. And we got to deliver it on Friday, and then we didn't have to hear from the client ever again. <laughs> and that was awesome. Unless they wanted another page, and then we would do another page for thirty-five hundred bucks. And, you know, I just, I, I still believe that that's a great model. Um, and I think the client services industry should adopt that and think a little bit more about productizing their work in that way. Because I don't think everybody needs big, huge, massive redesigns and massive projects all the time. No, I mean, as, as a client, you, you do say to yourself, um, you're kind of getting married to this whole big project yeah. and you don't know. You don't know. I mean, it's, it's and, 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 and you really don't know how long it's going to take, and you really don't know how much it's going to cost, and you really don't know what you're buying, and you really don't know what you're going to get. So make it a week, 3500 bucks. If you like it, we'll do another one. If you don't, that's fine. And maybe you just need one page. So anyway, that's how that happened. So, you, so then you work on Basecamp as a project. And I, I'd love you to talk for a minute about, uh, you know, you built Basecamp for yourselves. Yes. And talk about why you think that was important. Yeah, and this is how I've always done everything. So um, audio file, that FileMaker Pro thing to collect music was for me. Um, Basecamp was for me. I made something before that called Single File, which was a book collection thing. That was for me. Um, the reason why is because I think that um, you know. You just know when it's good enough. If you're, and that's an important point. You know when it's good enough. Because if you're building something for somebody else, you're always guessing. You're trying to read their mind. They're telling you this. but. Everything gets lost in translation a little bit. It's like a game of telephone. They tell you one thing and you interpret it a different way. And you can never feel, you, can ne you have to feel through someone else. And that's just hard. It's very hard to do. It's possible, but very hard to do. Um, but when you build something for yourself, you know when you're done. Because you know when it works and it solves the problem that you had. It does the job that you're hiring it to do. And you're like, it's done. And that's how we built Basecamp. We had a problem. We knew what we needed to do. And we knew when it was done. Um, and we didn't go off and imagine all the other things it could do, because we didn't need all those other things. We knew exactly what we needed. And so I think that you're, you can judge quality at a much uh, more precise level. You're not judging it by proxy. You're judging it because you're using it. Um, I think it's more satisfying. And uh, I think that, that you're more excited about it, and you do better work that way, personally. There's no question. My, yeah. we, we do better product work when it's a problem we can relate to. We can relate to. to. Yeah, yeah no totally. Question. totally. Um, so your web design firm, you're very successful, uh, but your services business, yeah. trying to productize some of the things in there. You got this product that goes out there. Talk about that transition, because they're two totally different kind of companies. Yeah. Talk about that transition, how it went, what, what was it like? We didn't, we didn't know it was going to happen. We, we thought that, so we made this base camp thing, we're like, all right, this is a product, we call it base camp, we polish it up, we threw some prices on it that we thought were reasonable, $19, $39, 59 and 79. Like, this is a subscription service. There were very few at the time. We were really early. This is 2004, 10 years ago. Um, there was, I don't know, hardly any SaaS. SaaS wasn't a term. No one knew. Subscription software is a subscription. Not many people thought about that. Um, so we did that, threw it out there, announced it on our blog to 2,000 readers. Um, and we, we had this thing in mind that we weren't thinking about switching from service yet. I just knew I didn't like service. We're like, all right, if Basecamp makes 5,000 bucks a month after the first year, so ultimately you'd be doing 60,000 a year, like, that's a nice, that's like 5% of our income. That'd be like a nice side thing. It'd be killer. We need it anyway, so why not? 
turned out that it was doing $5,000 a month in about six weeks. And so we realized we're onto something here, like this is real. And then it just kept it steady growth. It's grown every quarter since then. Um, and like the last quarter is always, the last quarter is the best quarter we've ever had. And hopefully the next one, I mean, at a certain point it might not be, but so far it's been great for 10 years. And, um, but we didn't know. And it took about a year or so for it to, do, to be generating more money than our services business. And at that moment. It's still pretty fast. Yeah, it was fast. We were, there was nothing else like it at the time. It was just, it was fresh, it was different. It was fairly priced. Um, and it made sense, we understood the market. We, it was good, it was a good fit all around. And then about a year and a half, a year, year, year and a half, it was making more money, so we stopped doing client services in 2005. And have not taken on one of those since. And we're, we became a software company at that point. 